ladies and germs. Welcome to the grand finale of Listener Suggestion Summer here at We Read It One Night, the podcast where two sisters led romance novels make us happy and hopefully make you happy too. We're letting August slip away and welcoming Sad Girl Autumn with Twisted Love by Anna Huang. It's not Twisted Lies, even though I messed up the title in the episode, but it is Rachel's very first dark romance, even if this one is more dark romance light. Will she like the dark and twisty world? Will you? Will you think our hero is just a drama queen without even the excuse of mafia connections? You'll just have to listen to find out. And while you're listening, drop us a quick five-star rating and maybe even a review. Enjoy the show. I'm entering my baby spice era. Why? Uh, Well, obviously, yeah. (laughs) Two little pigtails, listener. (laughs) It looks so cute. I like it a lot. Uh my hair in a pixie cut a few months ago if you don't follow us on socials i guess you don't know that but it's long enough now that like if i were to just like leave it down i would look like a karen and a scene kid had a baby in like the worst way possible so i have to put them up in two little pigtails but it's okay because now i'm baby spice when my hair was short and i was growing out i always put it in like two low pigtails i don't know why like i don't think it ever occurred to me to do those but I wish it had. Well, your hair, like my hair is longer on top. You know, true, your, yeah. your hair was a universal right, length. My hair's, right. I can't put the bottom of my hair. It's not long enough right. yet. Unfortunately, it's not professional. So I always have to like try to like clip it back or something whenever I have like an outside work call. Oh, the pigtails? Like, I had my like evaluation today and I was like, well, I can't wear my baby spice pigtails to this like, evaluation. Who decided so that that's I not professional? To... It's ridiculous. Like what? You know what is unprofessional? Alex Volkov, who is the hero of this book, Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. This is a listener suggested author, not a listener suggested book. And this is the first book in her Twisted series, which I have no data to back this up, but I assume is her most popular series because it's the one that I always see on like Bookstagram and Book Talk when people talk about her. It is, I would say, like it's dark romance, but I would say like it's dark romance light. So, like, I've definitely read much, much darker romance. I would say this is probably, like, the most tame the dark romance gets. So, like, if you've ever wanted to dip your toes into dark romance and you want to, like, start out with something a little bit, like, tamer, I would say this is, like, a probably a pretty good entry book. Because, like, if you hate the hero in this book because he's, like, a stalker and like violent then like your dark romance is probably just not going to be for you but if you can get into this book then i yeah. hate the hero in this book <laughs> not no. primarily i don't hate him but it wasn't the stalking and the violence it was the fact that he's an asshole to his employees and just people in general like he's just like a walking I don't know how – she's just like a walking red flag of like a male Karen. Of like- Allison, so many times he would be like, my employees are afraid of me because I'm such an asshole. He literally – at the end, he's like – at the end, Allison, he's like, I have a better work-life balance now. I leave the office at 6, which I'm sure makes my employees really happy. He's literally like constantly talking oh, – have you? how did you miss that? I don't know. The only thing I remember is in the beginning, he has a really incompetent secretary and he's like, I need to fire yeah. her. And then uh-huh. at the end, his secretary – Is afraid of is him. Is like – he's like mean to his secretary, but it's because he's heartbroken. He's lashing out, Rachel. Yeah, that's not ex- – <laughs> he's an asshole to his employees no matter what. I just don't understand. He's like a he's a Karen, is what he is. I don't I don't know. He's literally yeah. Apply. It hundred percent applies. Why? Because he's a man. Like I don't understand. No, I just don't. He's think, mean to he's, service he, workers he, and employees. He is the manager. He doesn't ask to speak to the manager. He's the manager. Yeah, he's just the worst kind of person. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like what? Uh, I really like this book. <laughs> He, like I don't know. How I just like really. I just really let that kind of like wash over me. Yeah, into my pores. I will say that dark <laughs> romance usually doesn't involve being mean to service workers, or service workers usually just don't factor. He also is like, there's just like so many like little red flags that would be like red flags in normal people. Like even outside of talking, like the fact that he like con- like we get insights into his like road rage multiple times. He's like, everyone's an idiot and they are all drive slow. How the fuck did you miss that? It's like four separate times he has that exact thought. No, he only does that that one time no. when he's racing to the airport. No, it's in the be- no, it's in the beginning too. 
It's a con. It's he has he goes through zero character growth. Allison, his character he's stays exactly the, the same. Racing to the airport, and and no, and at the beginning he's not racing anywhere. He might be racing to get Anna in that unnecessary like stalker move. No, he's but. going to get he's going to get Ava. Ava, <laughs> not uh-huh. Anna. That's the off Anna's author. Yeah, yeah. Ava, who got pushed in a pool, Rachel, and you know she can't swim. Okay, no, it's skipping. another time in the beginning. We are we are skipping ahead. Uh, but I think you have already gotten the vibe, dear listener, of <laughs> where we fall on the spectrum of this book. Um, I love this book. <laughs> He's just like a I bad was, person I was in the classic wildly, bad person. I was wildly entertained by this. I have already downloaded the second book in the series. Also, <laughs> I'm going to listen to it on our vacation. <laughs> even have any mafia ties like he's just like a joke that's why i'm saying it's like dark romance i know light because it wasn't like mafia it wasn't motorcycle club it wasn't any sort of like bradva or whatever like it was why is it called a motorcycle club instead of a motorcycle gang i don't know man i i just know that's what it's called it was that's why it was just like rich man who is very domineering and violent (laughs) controlling i don't know i think i rachel i just think maybe dark romance just isn't for you like you have to be able to like get past all no, those, but again all the stuff. things that i hated the most about him have nothing to do with the dark romance elements he's no, just a, he's just a it's, dick it's all part of the dark romance elements that's the thing is you have to just be able to like go with the you have to be like in real life horrible i don't want any of this in book world I'm ready to like release my inhibitions. Why? <laughs> why are you in, on I, why are you into him being like rude to his to people below him? I'm not him. into him being rude to his employees, but also I didn't really notice. That. How could you not notice it? I only noticed when he had an incompetent secretary, and I was like, "Well, she's incompetent, so like I don't." Also, really she care. wasn't. No, she wasn't actually incompetent. That's that's his unreliable narration. She was like totally like no. He was only no. he only hired her because she was as a favor to like a senator or whatever. And like she kept giving people his personal phone number. Oh, she did it <laughs> once, one time, and then we found out that his uncle was orchestrating the whole thing as CEO. It's ridiculous. I was like, wow, that was an escalation. Anyway, I didn't really notice him being mean to service employees. I noticed him being mean to everybody else. <laughs> but I, yeah, yeah, I just think dark romance isn't for you, Rachel. <laughs> it's okay. No, because like again, I don't know how you could. I just that. again, Rachel. I just, right. I just. Right. It's like Continue. you know what it is. It's like how it's comparable to how like it's something like twenty five percent of women have like rape fantasies. No, but it's not that, Allison, because I totally understand that. Like I am one of them. Okay, that's mm-hmm. not what I'm talking about here. He's a dick in the traditional, not dark romance, not broody just- hero sense. He's a bad per. He's a bad character. It's not, I don't think it has anything to do with the dark romance. He's I just. Think it, I think I'm it does. To think, what's the word for it? Like Karen. All of those things that make up. Dick. Make up the the like broody dark romance alpha hero. No, it shouldn't. It should be like the like no because I feel like I can't even like put my finger on like I've definitely read other things where it's like I don't think you've ever read dark romance before. I don't think you've ever read another dark romance. You never read any of the mafia romances that I recommend you. I don't know. Okay, so listener, <laughs> you can tell this is a very polarizing book. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Remember how we <laughs> talked about? Remember how we watched that movie? Um, no, it's not that polarizing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming off as if I hated it a lot more than I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed, I enjoyed probably like eighty-seven percent of it at least. Like I thought it was good. It was a good story. I thought it was good. I'm, I'm coming off too much. I'm just like, I just want you to agree with me on these like these points because I listen I I agree <laughs> that it's it's bad to be rude to service workers okay and, and Alex your employees was. however but a he was never rude to service workers I I'm, I'm like but it's the same category that's the same kind of thing b I didn't really notice him being mean like the, okay. uh, again like the only the two oh, times I will I'm sure I wrote it down point by the point. beginning and I was like frankly she deserves it like why would you give away your boss's private phone number and in the end, I was like, well, he's heartbroken. So it's like the classic romance hero trope. No. Okay. I, no, wait, I'm so sure I wrote it down. Maybe not. Okay. No, and then he comes back. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Remember? Okay. Remember in the 27, in the 20s, when we watched that, oh my God, what the fuck is it even called? That like, it was, it was like Bulgarian or some shit. That movie. 365 days. 365 days. Which, oh, okay. the third, I just saw, I saw the trailer for the third one, Rachel. We still have to watch the second one. <laughs> 
<laughs> we couldn't no, we couldn't get through the second one because mom couldn't handle it, remember? No, we tried to start watching yeah, the first one and yeah. mom couldn't handle it. We oh, didn't even start with the second uh, one. Oh okay, yeah, we need to watch it. Okay. 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 <laughs> well, okay, remember we were talking about how like a lot of times the redeeming characteristic will be like like they'll be like like sex slavery or like child and you know like oh that, yeah he's not and involved. that's like the redeeming quality is he's like i that's what i'm putting my foot down on like, I, I draw will kill. the line at human I trafficking i don't believe that alex would even do that it's the problem like like that's the thing and i feel like i feel like little things like like not being a dick boss would have served that same purpose like obviously that's not on the same level but like i feel like that's the kind of thing that's the kind of like foil that would have been needed like he just needed to not be like that <laughs> or like or he needed to undergo some character growth at the end because he doesn't. He doesn't. He's never like, oh, I shouldn't have been addicted to them. He's like, oh, well, because I have a better personal life now, I'm leaving at six, which means I only terrorize them until 6 p.m. and not no, like midnight. He's, yes. He's learned to love. <laughs> no, he has. He goes through zero he character has growth. He blue eyes and zero an ice growth. blue heart at the beginning and zero growth. He learns to love. Okay. No. Also, he's he a vampire, becomes, so he can't change. He, no. He becomes. <laughs> I'm such a simp for her, by for the her. way. Right? He does, but not really for anyone else. Not even though. Not even though. Not even. He doesn't go. We'll, we'll get. Does. Wait, we'll, let, let's jump he does. into he it. He goes to Vermont for her, Rachel. He hates Vermont. <laughs> but she's still not allowed to talk to any men. She's not allowed to fuck any men. <laughs> no, she's not allowed to talk to them. Allison, I'm when I tell she's you that by to the talk end, to Ralph. Allison, <laughs> when I tell you that by the end of this, every time Ava started having a conversation with any man, I literally got like. I literally had like a like a, like a like a nervous response. I was like, "Oh my god, Alex is coming!" Like I can just I just can you imagine living like that? <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about though? Like, what's the word for that? Like when you're when you're like, it's not like it's not like full on PTSD, but it's like what's the word for that? You know, like when you're walking on eggshells, you're walking on eggshells at all times. <laughs> You're not gonna get me to agree with you anyway. Anyway, let's jump I, right this in. This book was just pure. I was like, hell yeah. I thought it was also really hot. I'm going to be honest. I was like really turned on for a lot of this book. All right. Ava is a baby. Okay, wait, wait. She's in wait, college. Okay. Can we introduce the character? So we have Alex Volkov, who is our rich man. He's 27. 26 at the beginning of he this. He turns 27. Allison, right? he's 26. He's been, he's been <laughs> planning for decades. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I don't want. Okay, I want to. Okay, I want to okay, do okay, it. Right. Okay. Ava <laughs> is still in in fucking college. She's twenty two. She goes to. I forget what the college is called, but it's, it's basically supposed to be like Harvard. It's not Tufts. It's not a real name. Oh, but it's supposed maybe. to be like Harvard. It's like really. Oh, no, that was a different whatever. book. I was reading a different book in which they also went Tufts to school. Tufts is a real school. Anyway, I know. it's like really good school. But she's going for photography, and she has a brother. She has a brother, Josh, and Alex and Josh are best friends from when they both went to said college together. And her brother, Josh, I think this is really funny. Like, he's basically like just like that creepy guy that never moves away from the college campus area. <laughs> like, that's seriously him. And she's like, oh, and he's leaving for a year, like upcoming soon. And she's like, oh, everyone's going to miss him and his parties. And I'm like, no, they're it's fucking creep. Like, that's no one likes that guy. <laughs> like, get no, out of here. Everyone's going to think, no, everyone's going to look 10 years down the line and be like, wow, that was really weird that that like grown ass man get in parties for college kids. People thought, think it was weird like at the time too, I feel like. I, but, here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing though. Well, A, so Josh is there because Josh, Josh is like what? 25, 26. Mm. I don't know whether he's the same age as Alex, I think he is. Whatever. He's like four years older than her. But I was confused about this. So wait. So first of all, Josh is really protective of Ava. Like that's why they, they live next door to each other. That's important. Remember that they live mm -hmm. next door to each other. He's really protective of Ava, which is like why he's still there. Like he's he's not as protective as Alex. but he, He's also in know. medical school, I guess. Like, well, that that's what I was wondering. Okay. So that yeah. was my question. So Josh is leaving to essentially do like Doctors Without Borders for a year. Mm -hmm. But – I guess he's, like, just graduated medical school, so I guess he's, like, taking a gap year between, like, medical school and residency or something. But, yeah, I was confused. I was, like, is Josh – was Josh still in college up until this point? Because that's kind of what it felt like. No, he wasn't. That Josh was, like, graduating med school. That's what I'm Maybe saying. Maybe med school, unclear. Yeah, that's what but... I'm saying. Like, was – so Josh, like, technically was still going to college. He wasn't just, like, the creep living near campus. He was, like, actually going to campus. <laughs> I guess – because we don't actually know that anyone 
besides I don't know. Eva that's still pretty. Friend. That's still I, not sure, like... sure, sure. But but to be fair to the party, to be fair to Josh, we don't know beside we don't know that anyone beside any undergraduate besides Ava and her three friends are invited to that party. Like we don't get confirmation. We, so it could just be like, like Josh's do. friends. They also live in DC, so like you know, like they're in what they're in a city. No, because she says. He's lived in the same crumbling house since undergrad. He's a town favorite, and I imagine people would probably miss his parties. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. He lives in D.C., you know? That's, okay, that's yeah. a pretty big – it's not a small town in Vermont. <laughs> well, sure, but then what is that – why does that make it more – what do you mean? I don't know what the point of that is. I'm saying his guests aren't – his guests aren't like – Maybe. I don't know. Just the way he was certain, describing like, you it. You know like, what I mean? He still lives like, in the frat house. Like, I don't know. Anyway, I mean, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Josh, Josh is like fine in all other ways. Pretty, for the most part so so Ava wants to be a photographer she's coming back from a shoot and she like needs to be picked up she has to like it's it's Josh's birthday right so she calls Josh like I forget why she doesn't have a ride she's like stranded she's dumb I don't know oh she had she want, needs to go pick up the cake or something and like the her, I don't know I don't she's know. stranded and so Josh is like I'll send my friend Alex to get you so yeah Ava's waiting by the side of the road um and it's like it's like starting to rain and whatever but Rachel did you notice this? Because this is the first note that I took for this book. She's thinking about wild bears. <laughs> oh, my God. No, She's I didn't. Like, I'm in the middle of the woods, like, on a dark road. What if a wild bear comes out? <laughs> Oh my god! I was like, "Well, Ava, if you listen to the early episodes of our podcast, you would know how to survive that bear encounter." <laughs> oh my god and she does have pepper spray because her brother got that for her for her birthday and i was like oh my god like that's like someone buying unasked for socks for your birthday like why like functional socks that's i mean like mom like when i went to college it's like yeah but that's not for your, I mean, as your what, birthday present yes like, no he offered to get it for me as a birthday present <laughs> I guess. I don't know. And the only reason he didn't is because pepper spray is illegal in New York City. <laughs> yeah. So Josh rolls up to get her. Like we find out he's like super smart. He's a genius. He's, quote, the only one in Thayer's history, that's the school Thayer, that finished the joint undergrad MBA program in three years. And she's like, wow, it's so impressive. And I'm like, that is, I don't know. I just feel like an MBA is like not, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm being a bitch. I don't know. Whatever. I just feel like a business <laughs> undergrad is like not that hard and then an MBA is mostly like MBAs are mostly for like schmoozing and like you know what I mean? I feel like it's mostly to say you have an MBA. From, it's not you don't actually like learn anything. I don't know. Whatever. We'll take it as a given. I've never got I've never had an <laughs> MBA. I had a business minor. Like that's my experience. With and it. was it hard? <laughs> like what? I mean it wasn't but also it was a minor. Like I had to take basically all intro level classes and like that was it. Like I never took any like advanced business classes. Anyway, I'm sorry. If you have a business degree, that's great. I just feel like like not that you don't – not that it's not useful. It's just like – If you have a business degree, I, frankly, I think probably the most useful thing you learn from a business degree is like how to program Excel. <laughs> right, right. Anyway. Josh is in the middle of sex when he picks up. Oh, He's right. in the middle. And listener, if you're like, that's a little weird that this man is picking up the phone in the middle of the it's sex. It's not the last time. Fear, <laughs> fear not. <laughs> it is not the last time we will see this occur. <laughs> anyway um <laughs> she's like hi ja or hi alex like we need to stop and get josh's cake and he's like no wait wait wait, wait. he's always grumpy what you skipped over a few things so first of all when it starts to rain this is when we get the first introduction to that she has some sort of traumatic backstory slash phobia that has to do with water and she can't remember anything before the age of nine mm. and but she's like oh it's not the rain so i was like okay so it has to have something to do with drowning which we learn it does and that triggered my memory rachel of the time when you tried to drown me I, no when i was <laughs> no. a child get out of here listener we had a pool in our house growing up Rachel was like, I can swim without a no. life vest, you loser, basically, to no. me. I'm paraphrasing here. And she convinced me to take off my life vest and go in the pool. And then she scurries on over to the adults in the deep end. And she's like, look at me to distract them. And then I start walking in the pool Allison? and just walk in until it goes above my head. Allison? And the only reason I'm not okay. dead is because okay. our mom saw right. me from the kitchen window I and was like, ah! Your story changed on this. I did not you you taunted yourself. You, you were just taunted jealous. me. You taunted Rachel. This part of the story appeared like 
five years ago and never before. No, it didn't. Yes. You want to know why? Because I wrote about it in my – so in the fifth grade, we had to make like an all about me journal. And the first story that I wrote in the all about me journal was about how you tried to kill me. Let me see it. When I was like, 10. guarantee it doesn't say that. <laughs> when I was 10. Like, so it definitely doesn't say anything about me, like me saying anything. It 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 100% is about how you tried to kill me. I literally wrote it at like the age of 10 or 11. So. Okay, we'll find it. Anyway, listener, you don't listen to our podcast, so listen to our squabble, but just know that like I, this was in the back of my mind throughout my reading experience. Find it. (laughs) And find it I did. Hi, listener. Editing Allison here. And I just want to step in here to say that approximately two weeks after we recorded this podcast episode, we did a clean out of the family office and- Lo and behold, what did I find in a binder tucked away in the corner, but an essay that I wrote in the fifth grade detailing how Rachel tried to drown me at the tender age of four. And now back to the book, which is why you're actually listening to this podcast. Alex drives up in an Aston Martin because, you know, you know. And and the minute you hear that his last name is Volkov, you know what you're in for if you are a dark romance reader like me. I knew exactly who this man would be the moment I heard his name was Alex Volkov, and he fulfilled every single one of my expectations. He's also super smart and already a multimillionaire because he invented a computer program as a child. <laughs> the Aston Martin is also the first clue of many, many, many clues that we get in this that this is either heavily inspired by twilight or the author loves twilight or my personal theory is that it started off as a twilight fan fiction which is great but just the number of times as in case you're in you know going over your head edward cullen also has an aston martin and that's quite literally the only time i've ever heard that kind of car mentioned like james bond. <laughs> yeah allegedly it's james bond's car what are you talking about it's james bond's car does anyone actually like say that though yes you say i'm driving an aston martin and james bond yeah. yes When would you have watched James Bond before the age of 10? I had a crush on Piers Brosnan. (laughs) And so I watched his James Bond movies. Josh, Ava wants to stop and get the cake. Josh says no because her like shirt is drenched. So he's like, you can see your nipples. And she's like really embarrassed. And then she says, I wanted to strangle him. But quote, I was usually a nonviolent person. End quote. Second Twilight reference. And she's like, you could have told me. And he's like, I told you now. And okay, wait. (laughs) Wait, I can't go a moment further without talking about the audiobook narrators for this book. Listener, if you have the chance to read this book on audio, I just, I guarantee it will enhance your reading experience by a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. The eighth narrator, she's fine. She's like a regular, like. Oh, I was going to say the opposite. I thought the Ava one was really good. The Alex no, one no, was no. I thought okay. she was fine. Like, no, like she was fine, but I wasn't like she was a good audiobook narrator. But I wasn't like oh. the Alex narrator. You know what he sounded like? You know what I could picture him saying? You know, oh, what's that? It's like a commercial or a jingle where it's like, oh yeah, burp, burp, and then has like music. Are you sure? You're oh, thinking oh, things I hate about Ferris you. Bueller's? No, oh yeah, yeah, Ferris Bueller. Yeah, Bueller, Ferris um, Bueller's day um, off. That thing like. Yeah, that that really deep voice yeah. that I can't do. The audiobook narrator's voice was so deep, and I was like, I felt it in my bones. It mm. was so I was like, this is quite frankly like, apart from Ileana Kadushin as Bella Swan, this is like the best audiobook casting I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah, I thought it was okay. I thought the Ava one was really good just because she like sounded like a real person. I don't know how to describe it. But I just I, – I don't like when the audiobook narrator's voice are too deep just because it like makes it so hard to hear. Like I have to adjust the volume every time. It's so annoying. And even then, even at top volume sometimes. I didn't have that experience. But no, I know what you mean. I usually don't like when it's super deep. But for some reason, like his voice, like the resonance of his voice and it just like the fact that it was so deep just really worked for this character. And I really enjoyed it a lot. Happy for you. Hats off, whatever your name is. I didn't write his name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they said it at the beginning and the end, like for each of them. And they, yeah, they each did like introductions. Great. I didn't listen to that. <laughs> so, it's, another thing that I thought was funny was as evidence that she's normally a nonviolent person, Ava is like, I didn't eat gingerbread cookies for a year after watching Shrek because I felt <laughs> like I was eating Gigi's family members, which is the first – when I was a kid, I didn't, wouldn't eat anything shaped like a person or an animal, like animal crackers, goldfish, gummy bears, like gummy worms, vitamin gummies, like any shit like that. 
face cakes with faces on them. And this is the first like even like oblique evidence I've gotten that like someone else feels this way. However, it is also the first – so Ava's like whole thing, we're hit over the head with this. She's just so – it's, it's grumpy sunshine. She's so sunny, so cheery. She's such a good person. Like she's so good and so nice and she's so smiley. But we're never actually given any evidence of her being a good person. Like not that she's a bad person, but like all that we get is that she smiles a lot and it's like happy, go lucky. I, but like well, – Okay, I would disagree that the book tries to make us think that she's a good person or that she's like kind. I don't think that's Alex what the book says is it so to many tell times. He's the like, book you just is telling so much us light. that she's yeah, yeah, that she's optimistic and that she's smiley and that she's cheerful, but that doesn't translate to me to being like, oh, she's a nice person. She's like saint like. We're never even given any evidence that she's optimistic. We're just she told is. That. She's all over about she, what about Alex? <laughs> is she? And she's always like she has like her like psycho ex is stalking her named Liam. Her psycho ex Liam is stalking her and she's just like, oh, you know, it's over. Like whatever. (laughs) She's like, it's in the past. I don't know. She's very – I don't think the book was trying to tell us that she was like saint-like or like a good person. I didn't get that vibe at all. Alex tells us she's a good person, but we're not like given anything. Yeah, but that's because he's like, I'm – dirty and broody and right bad. but like she he's like you bring lights in my life but like she doesn't <laughs> like i don't know anyway somehow we get to like him being like even if you weren't alex's sister even if you weren't josh's sister you're not my type and then we get into alex's pov we learn that he's quote not into hardcore bdsm end quote like okay we don't even get any bdsm in this book i would like to say uh... he never ties her up he, there's no blindfolds. Wait, 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 wait. There's, he gags her once he with her like, own underwear. What is, does like a, does like, what is subdom? What is that called? It's BDSM. Is that part of that? Because there's definitely elements of that. I don't. It's oh, no. Yeah. It's bondage. domination. Domination. Yeah. Definitely some yeah, of that. Yeah, dominance, sadomasochism. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely is some of the D. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just, when I hear BDSM, I expect there to be at least some like tying up or blindfolds and there wasn't. Oh, see, the number one thing I think of is the dominance thing. Oh, that's just par for the course for me for a lot of romance. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he, he's not into eye, he's the classic not into eye contact, only paid it from the back, blah, blah, blah. So basically like not good for the woman He at doesn't all. want <laughs> like, He doesn't want emotion at all. And he also doesn't want his partners to get off at all, apparently. He's like, Eva is just so like I expected her to have singing woodland animals while she trapes through meadows or whatever it was girls like her did. Like, okay. Wait, Al- <laughs> Alex describes – he describes the women that he, like, chooses to fuck because he's, like, you know, they're people who, like, don't expect an emotional attachment, any of that. And he's, like, they knew better than to think about feelings around me. Ridiculous. <laughs> he's so stupid. Um <coughs> anyway, she's such a little Josh bad. asks Alex to take care of Ava while he's away on his gap year because her ex Liam is harassing her. Yes. And Alex at first is like, no. And then, you know, he he spends a few more minutes like staring at Ava. And then he's like, I have an idea. And Josh is like, You're the only one I trust not to fuck my sister. Oh my God. No, he and he has like the most tra- this is where his like dramatic phrasing <laughs> asking him. Here I was, signing my life away, at least for a year. She was under my protection now. Which I feel like is right is that's a dark romance sign. And then he has a flashback to a blood soaked room and three bodies. All right. Yes. So we learn that Alex also has a traumatic backstory involving somehow his ukrainian uncle who is his only family and i very much got like batman vibes and i think this was helped by the deep voice narrator from like you know dead family and then like dead family leads to lifelong quest for vengeance and justice i legitimately don't think i know what a deep voice means because sorry i just realized like Cause okay, my ex like everyone always like he always said he's a really deep voice. Everyone always yeah. comments on high deep voice. I that's not how it sounded to me at all. This what? narrator, no, it didn't sound that deep to me. This narrator sounds completely different from his voice, and yet it still doesn't sound deep at all to me. It sounds like tinny. Have you ever heard a deep voice? Yes. Like when I think okay. of deep voice, I think of like um oh my god, what's his name? The the god. Who's God all the time? Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. That's a deep voice. I feel like it needs the thickness for me to like think of it as deep. I felt also. like this book did have a thickness. No, to it. it felt very tinny to me. I, felt, I don't know. It was like rumbly. 
I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. So we learn that because of his dead family and whatever relationship he has with his Ukrainian uncle, Alex has been planning for the last 16 years. And just a reminder, he's 26 years old at this point. For the last 16 years, he has been looking for revenge. My (laughs) justice, vengeance, salvation. For 16 years, the pursuit of those three things had consumed me. 16 (laughs) years might seem like a long time, but I specialize in the long game. Sir, you're 26. It doesn't matter how many years I have to wait as long as the end is worth it. You're 26. I specialize in the long game. I think that implies doing this for like that implies you've had the opportunity to specialize in more than one game. Like this, like you know what I mean. Like it doesn't matter how many years. It implies that he's like been able to do this before, and not that he spent his entire life. What? <laughs> like why make this is this is okay. This is this comes back to like it, it when I was reading game. this. It's more than half his life. I at first was thinking in my head. I was like, all right, she's still in college. For some reason, like I was 21 when I graduated college. I assume she was like probably – she's got to be under 21. She's like 20. And we know that Josh and Alex roomed together eight years ago in college. So I was like she, – he's in the – I was like why the fuck are they 20 and 28? But then like right after that we find out they're like 22 and 26. But like why not make her – like why make her in college? Like why not – and make him 26? Like why couldn't they be like 37 – 27 and 35 or something? Like that would have been so much – is that common? Why do they have to be – like why 26? Why? Like <laughs> – I specialize in the law game. Well, the college heroine, especially for like these kind of like dark romance light books, is very common. And just in like dark romance in in general, it's like very often like a younger heroine and like an older man. Like uh, there's this mafia romance that I read. It was like, I think it was like the first mafia romance that I read. And it's called Cormac by Jane Henry, I think. And he's like 29 and she's 18. <laughs> what? Oh my God. That's okay. It's like I thought an arranged wait. marriage. It's an arranged marriage. But oh it's God. creepy. There's a TikTok sound that I wanted to find something to use for. I think dark romance is the right thing. The sound is like, here come the police. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yikes. Okay. So now Alex is going to move into Josh's house. <laughs> Uh, of course, um, so he can keep a close watch over Ava. And Ava is like, I don't need protection. And Josh and Alex are like, ha, 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 little girl, leave it to the big men. <laughs> and so Josh puts us off and Alex is brooding. And then Ava's like, I'm going to bring Alex red velvet cookies. She weasels his way into his house and sees that he does have doesn't have any personal photos. And I... And he says, it's because I have memories. And I'm like, traumatic memories. Mm-hmm. And he goes, quote, right here as he taps his head <laughs> because <laughs> he has a condition that is a real condition that they definitely say the name of. And I didn't write down the yeah, name. I didn't write it's down. A real it's condition. like HDSMF, whatever. It is something. It's, I remember yeah. learning about an AP psych where you remember every. Thing about your life like you remember literally every single thing that's ever happened to you, you basically and you forget, cannot yeah. forget yeah and it's actually like very much a curse <laughs> much more like you would you may think that that would be oh cool but like definitely not well that's the thing is Ava is immediately like oh that must be horrible and I feel like that's not like normally I feel like most people think it's cool at first but yeah but Ava has like the traumatic backstory and she has her own like memory trauma TM so like she's clued into that if you think about it like you just would never let go of like any bad memory ever like if you like someone you know what I mean like someone saying something mean to you like 15 years ago would be like just as poignant or like you know a breakup or a death or anything yeah but when he was like oh I don't need any personal pictures because like I have have my memories memories. (laughs) and I was like I just know I was spent the rest of the book. I was like, there's going to be a moment when he puts up a picture of her and it's going to show that he has fallen in love. And you know what? We don't really get it until the epilogue, but it's there. It happens. (laughs) happens, And he complains about it. Yeah. Like in his head, he's like, he's like, he's like grumble, 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 broody, 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 farson farts, man. (laughs) You know, not, he's not, he doesn't act, he's not actually complaining about it. Yeah. Also, wait, 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 wait. They also, so all of Josh's furniture has moved out except for this fancy abstract painting that is in Josh's house. This painting is mentioned 
so many times. And I was like, the painting's got to be relevant. Like, what is this abstract painting? Like, how is this going to fold into the plot? It doesn't at all. <laughs> and like, I mean, I'll when I get to Josh's book, Josh gets together with Ava's friend Jules. Basically, all of Ava's friends are like the heroines of the series. But when we get to that book, I'll report back if it like makes an appearance of significance like in that book. Because just the number of times that they're like, yeah, Josh's abstract painting. And I was like, what is this painting? I don't understand why we keep learning about it. And listen, if anyone has like read the series, can you just please, can you tell me now whether the painting like makes a comeback in any other book? Because otherwise, like, oh, it's going to set me up for a lot of disappointment. <laughs> well, it's, I feel like maybe Jules and Josh's book. Well, it's, well, that's what I was saying. Name, like, I was like, yeah. maybe it'll, I, I was like, so maybe it'll be answered in Josh's book. Yeah. So if anyone has read Jules and Josh's book, which I think is the third book, please let me know <laughs> if, if this goddamn painting, if we get an answer as to why this goddamn painting is mentioned so many times. <sighs> god and alex is like so alex does krav maga like if you don't know is like the martial art of choice of the israeli defense force it's like pretty badass whatever and his immediate thought what do you did you write down a quote i have a quote from like the beginning of the scene (laughs) no maybe i have i have a quote but i don't know if it's the beginning the smell of sweat and violence stained the air And his first thought is like, oh, there's new – they're starting up new beginner lessons. I'm signing Ava up. Ava's going. And he's like, well, the more she stayed the more she stayed out of trouble, the more I could focus on my business and planning for revenge. <laughs> the planning for revenge audio narrator – audiobook narrator delivery took me out. Like I literally laughed out loud. It was so dramatic. Like – It was incredible. It was and then five he's stars. Like, and then he's like – she like she she'll stay out of trouble. I wouldn't mind more of those red velvet cookies though. Those were good. <laughs> He's so grumpy. He's so grumpy and pretty and dramatic. I this man. This is the thing. It's like you can't. You can't. You read these. I don't know. For me, the way I read dark, dark romance, I like don't take this man seriously. Like I t- I treat these dark romance heroes in my head as like toddlers who are trying to be like tough, but like they're in their little oversized toddler leather jackets and toddler aviators. I know, and I think again, like my criticisms beginning, I don't think they're they're not like an, an inherent part of the dark romance. Thing. Like it's basically it comes down to it comes down to who is he mean to right is he mean to his equals or betters or is he mean to his inferiors but here's the thing here's the thing about toddlers they're mean to everybody (laughs) toddlers are assholes the effect matters i don't know toddler okay i'm just saying like i i laughed so many times i was like this man is trying so hard (laughs) to be god but he's just a little marshmallow (laughs) With chubby little cheeks. <laughs> His psycho shit that also almost took me out. Like just <laughs> before this, we learned that both he has replaced her house's security system <laughs> without like without asking her. Like the yeah. guy just shows up one morning. He also runs background checks on all of her photography clients. <laughs> oh well, yeah. Wait, that's what I was about to say. She fucking no, because he's about to have the thought. He checks his phone after Krav Maga, and he's like, "Ava hasn't texted me back in an hour." I told her to leave her phone on. I make her tell me where all her shoots are, and I run background checks on all her clients. There are crazy people out there. I'm like, "Yeah, you, you were the crazy people, you." And then she doesn't respond in like five minutes, and he's like, "Unless she turn off her phone, something I told her never to do," and all because she didn't reply to his like, "What you do in text?" Like literally, like WYD. <laughs> This man. Maybe so, and then this Allison, I want you to remember feral. this. I want you to remember this because it shows the complete lack of character growth. This book is bookended with this incident, and then later on, he's going to turn his phone off and be like, "How do you have the nerve to tell me I can't? I have to leave my phone on." Just the hypocrisy. No, she gets mad at him for that. She does. Anyway, anyway he's anyway, 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 anyway. So he goes feral. He shows up at this is, Ava's this friends. Is first, this is the first road rage he and being a shows dick to up- people. Yes, but he thinks Ava's in danger. <laughs> Why would he think that? It makes no fucking sense. This is literally like psychopath- she never doesn't answer no. her phone. And if she had actually been in danger, like if he had actually been right, his spidey senses, I would have like been okay with like, you know, I would have been able to move on. Listen, it's said she multiple wasn't. times because he shows up at her friend's Jules house and he's like, has Ava ever not answered you? And Jules is like, no. And then Jules is like, like, fuck off. She's busy. And he's like, give me the address. And Ava's or- like, this man. 
is Jules. insane. No. <laughs> yes. No. Now, you know what he says? So Jules apparently is like doing an internship and he's like, I know your boss. I can derail your internship and get you like you can fail for life if you don't tell me okay. where Ava is. And that's a common thread. He's commonly threatening to ruin people. <laughs> and then but he's like, here's like the, here's the thing. I understand he does. He is blackmailing Jules here. And that is bad, bad, bad. I recognize that. But I also think that it wouldn't have taken much to get Jules to give him the address. So once again, Jules why have him do the that? Rest, for the rest of this scene, for the rest of the book, Jules is like this little chaos agent in the background, just like eating yeah, popcorn so, and like watching so, everything go to shit. So what was the point of having him do that narratively? Like because what is that supposed to make part us- of his character. Yeah, that never goes away. It's part of what makes him a horrible person. Like, just like he can ruin people because he's a broody alpha man. Okay, anyway, so he shows up. He no, literally- no, no. He's also he also has a thought. He's like Jules Ambrose was one of the most dangerous women I'd ever met. She's a twenty-two year old college student that you're trying to blackmail out of law school. Who, also, that annoyed me because clearly looks like Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> oh my god. Also, he's like, I've done my research on all of Ava's friends. Jules is pre-law. And the internship between the students' junior and senior years was critical for admittance into a competitive law school. Like, what? <laughs> like, no, that's not a thing. Like, clearly, we just didn't bother with that at all. Or the author's, like, Canadian, and that's how it is in Canada. I don't know. But, like, whatever. That No, that's not know. a thing, anyway. people. Don't read this and think, like, what does that even mean? I don't know, Rachel. I don't know. Maybe it's different for DC schools. No. Anyway, Alex is feral. He kidnaps Jules. He kidnaps he, Jules. No, no. Frankly, Jules just jumps in the car. <laughs> She's like, can't wait to watch what happens next. They drive. Jules is like putting on like lip gloss in the car. And like Alex is like, <clears throat> like brooding. He jumps out of the car. He barges into her friend's house he's like the guy opens the door he's like is Ava here and she's like she's upstairs but like dude you can't come in and this man just like whacks the guy aside barges upstairs opens the door and sees that Ava is taking like some sort of sexy photo shoot for one of her photography friends and he's like how dare you take a sexy photo shoot with another man ah, and he like spews flames and Ava's like bro chill and then he like grabs her friend's camera forcibly deletes all of the photos and it's like I will kill you and your what camera if you ever talk to her again yeah and then he makes the Ava leave. yeah and I'm, the whole time I'm like why is no one calling the police like literally he should be arrested for this this is assault and battery and destruction of property. <laughs> assault, battery, destruction of property, possession of a dangerous weapon. That like, sounds- <laughs> like he, you can't come into someone's house without permission and ruin their stuff. Rachel. Rachel. I want her to get a restraining order on him. Also, Jules, Jules is like baiting him on the way over and she's like, <laughs> maybe she didn't answer because she's having sex. And Alex is like, if she was having sex, even more reason to interrupt. College boys are some of the most dangerous creatures in the world. The same way Jules is the most dangerous woman you've ever met. Like what? You're the only psychopath here. He's constantly projecting on other people. I think college boys are the most dangerous is derogatory, but Jules is the most dangerous is like complimentary. <laughs> Alex is like, ah, yes, an equal. (laughs) I see we are on the same level here. Wait, at one point, I don't know when he does it. I literally just wrote down the quote. He thinks, I don't know how humans survive this long. Most people were idiots. (laughs) Yeah, he's constantly thinking like that. Which is like a huge red flag. He's so full of himself. I don't know. <laughs> and then he says, he's looking at Ava's photographer friend and he's like, I hope Blondie enjoyed his working pair of eyes while he still had him. Yeah, why is that a good thing? <laughs> it's dark romance. <laughs> but I just don't understand. Like, why not Rachel, have him interrupt on Rachel, someone actually being a dick? Rachel, Rachel, that's not what dark romance is. It's not just justified aggression. It's like all the time alpha hole. All, All right, then I hate hole. it. I hate it. <laughs> I t- thank you. I'm glad that you finally admitted dark romance isn't for you, and that's okay. <sighs> also, Ava tries to get the card back, and she quote scrambled over me like a fucking spider monkey. Hang on tight, spider monkey. Hang on tight, spider monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it was almost cute how she thought she could order me around. Yeah, you can order her around. Like get out of here. Yeah, I don't think that this was a Twilight fanfic, but I do think that Anna Huang almost definitely started out 
in Twilight fan fiction. And I mean, that's the case for a lot of romance novelists. Sure. Um, like Christina Lawrence started out in Twilight fanfic. And to be clear, this isn't derogatory. I'm just having fun like pointing yeah. out every single little Easter egg. Sally Thorne started out in, in fanfic. Like all of those people started out in fanfic. He also threatens Ava with ruining that guy's career if she doesn't comply. And he's like trying to put it on her. He's like, you wouldn't want that, would you? There are two ways to threaten people. Attack them directly or attack those they care about. I wasn't above doing either. So he even like turns that shit on Ava. Uh- <laughs> it's literally like – it's literally giving like shitty parent and child. That's what it is. He's like a shitty abusive dad walking in and dragging her away. Anyway – they're driving back. Ava's stewing in her juices. And Alex is like, I love the silence. It's my favorite thing. I hate when people fill it up with, you know, useless chatter. But something compelled me to turn on the radio halfway through the drive. But it wasn't like he, I cared about her silent like, I don't care about <laughs> it. But like, I just don't like the silent. Like right now, I just want to listen to music. Like for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. So then Ava meets up with her friends. So Ava, something I really like about Ava in a way that she's not like Bella Swan is that she very much is like other girls. Like she has, she does, she likes girly things. She has actual female friends that she like actually is friends with and isn't just like secretly judging. Has like positive relationships with you. Yeah. And so there's Jules, there's Bridget, who's a literal princess. And then there's Stella, who's, we don't, she's an Instagram model. I don't know. And Stella's tall, like, I keep and- forgetting that Stella existed, frankly. I kept being surprised that Stella was there. <laughs> <laughs> I noted her just because she's specifically 5'11 and I think like Jules or Bridget is, or like, is like 5'9 and that's also noted but they're not like oh she's tall because that's like my I don't know but you're not tall if you're 5'9 like sorry get out of here if Stella exists too anyway it doesn't really matter except that Jules cooks up a plot it's, it's so convoluted and like unnecessary it's just an excuse to get them to spend time to for Al- yeah. like Ava to go out of her way to spend time with Alex yeah yeah, uh, Jules is basically like, "LOL, guys, you should have seen it." Like Ava really gets under Alex's skin. Like that's the only time I've ever seen him show emotion. Um, so like we should see how far it goes, and gives her like a literal list of emotions for yeah. Ava to try to like make Alex feel. And what is it? It's like sadness, happiness, something jealousy, and jealousy. yeah, disgust and jealousy, like grossed yeah. outness or something. It's like classic classic this is fabulous <laughs> classic format yeah and i thought i thought there was gonna be i thought there was gonna be like a time when he like finds out that it was like you know when like she's all that when she's like am i a bet am i just right. a bet? yeah I thought yeah, it was yeah. Gonna be like some sort of version mm-hmm. of that but, like he never finds out and honestly like by the time it gets to the point where i was like wait is he just never gonna find out i'm like i don't even think that he would really care right <laughs> And, like, we just kind of forget about it. Like, that's why I was saying it's not really necessary. Like, I don't know. Maybe a it's little just, bit. It's there to it get her to away. actively – we needed a reason for Ava to, like, spend time – to actively go out of her way to spend yeah. time with Alex. Because otherwise, like, she wouldn't. No, and I think – well, here's the thing, Allison. You say he wouldn't care. Like, well, first of all, he's been, like, orchestrating. I don't know what – maybe we don't know. No, 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 no. Don't okay, okay, never mind. All right. This is a big twist. Um, There's so many twists in this book. <laughs> all of them predictable, but all of them, like – <gasps> I can't believe it. <laughs> Twisty. So we find twisted, out that- Twisted, twisted love, uh, one might say. And, mm. that, that, and that in itself is a twist because that's not the way it's you would think that the word twisted. twisted together. Wow. <laughs> so we mentioned Ava and her like trauma. She also has nightmares, like night terrors, I guess, where yeah, she's like screaming. No, she's bad. like, help, mo- help me, mommy. Like, And she, it always happens at 4.44 a.m., which she says in Chinese culture, the number four is considered un- like, unlucky because the word for it sounds like the word for death. Yes. Which I knew, which I remember my my college roommate, um, her dad is Chinese. She was like telling me she's like a dancer and she had she was like at a dance competition. She had like a number and she was like 4.44. Mm-hmm. And she was like, that was really unlucky because it means death, death, death. <laughs> yeah, it's always a 444. So re- remember that. That's important. But in this dream, Ava's like drowning and she's like her mom was like on the deck before she fell in the water is like what she's remembering. Mm-hmm. So you're like, "Oh my god, did like her mom try to kill her?" So keep keep that in mind mm-hmm. because it's about to get twisted. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, so Jules comes in and comforts her or whatever. Meanwhile, Alex is like ruining some man's business career. <laughs> and, and the man's like begging and he's like, oh, like this is so boring. Like he's literally a psychopath. And then he's like, I made a mental note to fire my assistant because she let someone get my number. And I was like, that escalated quickly. Like, are you kidding me? 
But he's and then like, he, this is the first of many mistakes. Okay, but I bet the mistakes are like the wrong number of raisins at his bagel. Like <laughs> he's thinking about so Alex is an insomniac canonically. He only needs two to three hours of sleep with no, the but occasional he naps nap throughout. throughout the it's day. not that he no, it's not that he only needs that. That's just all he can get. Like he's that's probably why he's such an asshole because his brain is literally quite literally like not yes. functioning correctly. I mean, he's listen, early on set. <laughs> by the end of the <laughs> book, Ava does have him. She's like, Alex is like, she's she's making me drink chamomile tea. And and be and sleep she's like schedule. taking melatonin and like <laughs> sleep schedule and it's helping. I'm getting more sleep. <laughs> it's great um but he's like i can drink espresso before bed because i don't sleep <laughs> God. Okay. and then he sits in his chair after he ruins this man's this random man's career he sits in his chair and broods over his traumatic childhood memories and his sad first birthday as an orphan in which his uncle ivan took him to i don't know giggleberry fair and like tried to make him happy but he was you know a sad 11 year old and also vengeance with you know in all caps and this was the point i would like to note at this point in my notes i said i'm calling it now that uncle ivan killed his parents and has been lying to him nice what i wrote down well he's like how could birthdays be special if everyone had one which also gave off very Voldemort vibes but <laughs> we learned that the uncle had him go to therapy so i was like okay at least the revenge thing wasn't his uncle's idea because i think he explicitly says like the uncle's like not into the revenge thing but that's definitely not true later on we find out the uncle's like helping him get in their event. Yeah. It's a know. running like, theme of like, don't trust people who send you to therapy in this book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the lesson mm-hmm. here. Is that therapy will not help you and don't trust people. Throw, who throw you off the scent on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but these people both really, like, they both need therapy. Oh, <laughs> they just sure. need to send themselves to therapy. Well, it seems like they were getting, I just don't understand. Whatever. It's like, it's just yeah, like a – it's a, it's a cover-up. Um, <laughs> so it's time for Ava's plan. She goes over to Alex's house with some sad movies, including A Walk to Remember and Marley and Me, which are objectively sad movies. I did I have cried at Marley and Me the first time I saw that. And I would say they're sadder than The Notebook. That's what she says. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, good. Because she's like, got to make him feel sad. Emotions. But as she gets there, he's about to leave <laughs> for a date with someone named Madeline, we find out shortly. Mm-hmm. And he's like, ah, whatever. Like, Madeline was being annoying anyway. She's like, trying to bring feelings into this. Like, I'm going to hang out with Ava. No reason. It's just because Madeline's God. being annoying. It's not because I'd rather hang out with Ava. So he- they watch the movie. And... <laughs> and... Oh, what was it? Oh, this is like the first time they're talking after... He, you know, yeah, broken and entered into her friend's house. And she's like, she like says something, she like criticizes him, and he's like, Don't parade naked in front of other men again. And she's like, Other men? Right. <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, Freudian right. slip. Boom. Uh, <laughs> and then he cancels date. Wait, wait, wait. You said his eyes were blue before, but I have written down I'd be giving him the silent treatment for days since he stormed in like an overbearing green eyed tornado. So what's the truth? Oh, maybe green he has blue? green eyes. The cover has blue eyes. That's the only reason I'm saying that. <laughs> I don't know. So maybe anyway, he actually has yeah, green eyes. other men. And then she like, she's like, oh, I feel so guilty for ruining his date. But the thought that he was no longer going to dinner with some beautiful, mysterious woman, quote, pleased me more than it should have. Bella Swan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and so he cancels his date. And then they, we splash forward. They're like, it's at the end of Walk to Remember. And the, she's crying. She's sobbing. And he's essentially like, master your biological reactions. <laughs> he's yeah. like, I don't have any eyes. Tears? What's that? <laughs> All that's missing here from Edward Cullen is like him reaching out and like swiping one of Ava's tears off her face. And like- <laughs> well, Edward would never be like, why are you crying? You know what I mean? That's no. not. That's not. Yeah, so brand. Ava's crying. And she's like, why aren't you like, why aren't you reacting? Why aren't you human? Everybody cries at this movie. And he says, and this is a, this is a continuing refrain, refrain. He says, don't try to humanize me. I am not a tortured hero from one of your romantic fantasies. You have no (laughs) idea what I'm capable of. And I just wrote this goddamn drama queen. (laughs) Oh, I wrote, no, sorry, sir. You are. (laughs) But he's like, you're too trusting. And she's like, you're not trusting enough. Well, that's why we keep being told she's so trusting and like has to see the good in people. We're not given an example of that. I mean, she like gives her dad a million chances despite having the heat. That's just a symptom of abuse. That's not like having to see the good in people. That's just that's just a symptom of abuse. Like it's not. So she's he's not crying. She's like, are you a robot? And then she like jokingly like touches his back to be like where's a control panel and he's like don't fucking touch me or like 
I forget how he's like, whatever. But then like his response to that is to like grab her and like swing her around until she's straddling his leg. Of course. But, like the just the nerve. It's just of like course. The, of course. He's like, I'm not a toy, Ava. Don't play with BBB unless you want to get hurt. And then she's like, you wouldn't hurt me, which is also very toilety. And, and this is the point when he starts calling her sunshine. Which Rachel, actually makes sense. It actually okay. makes sense because he's shitting on her for being sunny. Yeah, so, for being sunny. Again, also, all we need the is a reason. The weather is super tied to this book. Is the it? number of times when it's like raining and then the sun comes out, especially at the end. I, the rainbow like, thing. Alex That's is only time I in his it. office and it's like raining and then like ava like you know i will get to it but then like yeah it was raining and then a rainbow comes out like the number of times that it's like and then the sun came out and everyone's happy or like alex is like i can't see in the sun anymore after they break up like the weather is very very big yeah so he calls her sunshine mm-hmm. and she's still straddling his lap and he's like your bleeding heart is dripping all over me and she thinks <laughs> he doesn't say but he said it's dripping all over me and she's like but he's like referencing her bleeding yeah. heart. Like, it's is yeah. like the previous That's what he meant. Yeah. and she thinks he means that <laughs> her lady juices are like getting all over his pants. And this she's is so turned off. The first of at least two times that she's like, I'm worried there'll be a, like a wet spot on his leg. <laughs> <laughs> so she like jumps off and she's like, Whoa. And Alex is like, Hey, hey smirk. Alex her. is like, Put it in. And she's like, What? And he's like, The DVD. The <laughs> next <laughs> So they start watching Marley and Meat, but she falls asleep on the couch, and he's so grumpy. He's like, Ugh, it's raining outside, and I have to carry her to bed because I can't. She can go back to our house because she'll get wet, and I can't wake her up because she's sleeping so peacefully. And and I don't have a guest room so because he's you know I don't room? have any friend. He has a furniture. guest, but it's, guest yeah, room, yeah, but it's yeah. not made up. No furniture, um, yeah. He doesn't have furniture in the guest room, so he's like, she has to come and sleep in my bed. <laughs> Grumpy, grumpy, grumble, grumble, grumble. <laughs> God, he's so grumpy. <laughs> so, and then now we get, of course, we get a nightmare scene. We get a classic nightmare scene. Mm-hmm. If a heroine ha- gets nightmares or has a traumatic backstory and they're sleeping in a bed, you know, you know, there's going to be a nightmare scene. So she starts having night terrors and he's like, I almost smoothed a hand over Ava's brow before I caught myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But when he first wakes up, because Ava screams and that's how he wakes up, and he thinks her scream is like an intruder in the house. And this man oh just God. whips out a gun from I don't yeah. even know where. <laughs> he just pulls out a gun. He's like ready to shoot. Wait, I need to find. I definitely wrote that down, but I can't find it. Oh, we're like skipping. There's a lot of my notes. We'll say them. First of all, he gets a thought. He's like, I'm going to ditch Madeline because she was like mad about me canceling. It cements my decision. I'm like, all right, you canceled your plans with her last minute for someone else and she's not allowed to be mad. It's giving Bella Swan being like, what does Jessica need? A written <laughs> apology? Like, no, but like an apology would be nice. And then he gets into bed with Ava and he's like, a gentleman wouldn't sleep, would sleep on the couch. But of all the insults people have thrown my way over the years, <laughs> gentleman wasn't one of them. <laughs> he also so while he's like looking at Ava having a nightmare he's like she wouldn't last a day in the real world like meanwhile this is her childhood trauma he's like she was so delicate how easy it would be to crush her head <laughs> hey Edward <laughs> what Psycho. but yeah the, the gun next to the bed thing like that just seems like a recipe for disaster like that's it's, exactly why you shouldn't keep a gun there know, because that's know, it's so easy for like a family member to walk in and you're like half asleep and you're like an intruder and then like shoot them <laughs> I know. Okay. So anyway, Ava wakes up and she's on top of him. And briefly, she's like, oh my God, did we sleep together? And he's like, huh, huh, Is she no. on top of him or is her hand just on his dick? Like, <laughs> she's like half on top of him and her hand is on his dick. Okay. <laughs> and Alex is just like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> But, and then we get a Twilight reference. Do you remember what this is? Because he specifically calls out sparkly vampires. We get an overt Twilight reference. He says, but it's disparaging okay. our okay, boy. Okay. Edward. Okay. So. Ava's first thought is like, oh, no, Josh would kill me. I couldn't even blame him. I'd slept with my brother's best friend. And wait, can I just do a little detour? So this is a logical – so I always forget. There's so many books where, like, the the drama is that it's your brother's best friend and, like, you know, you can't date him. And there's such a logical reason for this. Like, it makes complete sense that you wouldn't necessarily want your sibling to date your best friend because, A, it's your best friend and then they kind of mm-hmm. be like, quote, unquote. But also, like, if they break up, it's so awkward, right? That's complete – you don't even right. need more than that. But these books always make it into some weird protective shit with the brother. And this book, up until, like, the last, like, 25%, did so well with that. Like, it's <laughs> that's all you need. You don't need some, like, weird bullshit, like, incestuous – I don't know. It's just always so fucking weird to me. So – 
Ava's like, well, even if you weren't Josh's best friend, like you're not my type either. And that's when he's <laughs> like, so what is your type? And she's like, Ian Summerholder. And that's uh, when he's like, better than a sparkly vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Ian Summerholder? He's uh, Damon in The Vampire Diaries. Oh, gross. What? He has a very Him and weird Nikki Reader are married. I mean, she has a weird face too. Uh, he's probably a nice person. He has nice eyes, but his his mouth is just so weird to me. I don't okay. know. Okay, all right. Let's not disparage Eamon, e- Ian. Okay, I'm, I don't on this podcast. Anyway, so well, yeah, no, let's not disparage Nikki. He's like, oh, at least it's not like a sparkly vampire or whatever. And I was like, oh, do you just see too much of yourself, <laughs> Edward Cullen? You don't want to admit that you are him. And that's when she's like, stop calling me Sunshine. And he's like, it's a nickname. His chin is just too pointy. Ian Summerholder? Yeah, that's what it is. I think he has. Okay. All right. Anyway, now Ava, we're back to the emotions checklist because, you know, just to keep the plot going. And Ava's like, okay, I got to make him feel disgust. Like sadness didn't work out, but I got to make him feel disgust. So she brings it. She makes him like really shitty cookies, like really, really disgusting sounding cookies. Asparagus and and garlic brittle, which doesn't sound a bad combination. It doesn't sound that. But I guess like if it's with sugar, you know what I mean? If it's like cookie. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) Um, Anyway, so she brings them to him and he like takes a bite and she's like, ooh, he's going to be so disgusting disgusted then he's like they're fine and then he just eats the whole cookie and like walks away (laughs) and she's like what how could this be i didn't realize until the end of this that she interpreted that as like oh he just like lied about liking them because he didn't want to hurt my feelings because to me like it's fine it's not a compliment to the cookie that's not being nice like i interpreted it as like he saw what she was trying to do and he just like didn't want to act grossed out Oh, no, I, I, I saw it. he's definitely trying to protect her feelings. And it's funny because later on, I forget when we, this happens later on, we get a we get a quote about um, he's like, I want her. I wouldn't mind her making me those red velvet cookies again. They're delicious. You know, he said that before. Yeah. already. No, good. <laughs> no, it's fine. I think he's definitely not... trying to protect her feelings. Yeah, but that's not like. Yeah, but that's basically how it would work to the red velvet cookies. You know what I mean? Like, that's very in character mm. for him to be like thanks and then just like walk away you know what i mean yeah and to yeah. not like raps rap poetic ras pro what is it raps poetic raps poetic rap yeah whatever yeah um ian summerholder's face like almost exists in the uncanny valley for me that's what it is something about it it's like i know it's supposed to be handsome but there's just something about it that's like not human i guess he is a vampire anyway oh two vampires together wow like you read anyway the next thing they do, she takes him on a picnic and he's like, the grass is covered in dog pee. And then a dog comes over and literally pees on his foot. Like, see, that's another indication that he's just not the dogs are great <laughs> judges of character. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I like how they're fallen in love. I like yet. how by this point they're literally just going on dates. And but it's supposed to yes. be like yes. I don't, for no like makes <laughs> no great. sense. Okay, so now she's out with her girlfriends and Liam shows up and Liam is drunk and high. Liam is her talk to her ex who cheated on her. Yes. Liam has gotten into some sort of drugs. Um, This is never really like – the Liam plotline just kind of goes away. It's also – it's one of those things that it's just there so that Alex will move in next door to her. Like that's why the Liam plotline exists. The same way the emotion list exists. It exists so that they spend time together. Right. So Liam shows up and he's like, can I just talk to you? And she's like, fine, we'll talk for five minutes. Like, And they go outside the restaurant. And he starts to manhandle her, like trying to beg for her back. Starts to manhandle her. And she knees him in the fucking balls. And it's fabulous. And I really appreciate This is the first of several times in which like – I feel like in dark romance, like, and I mean, even just in romance in general, like those kinds of scenes would be a very like he swoops in at the last minute. He swoops in to save her, but like most of the time, like Mm -hmm. yes, like Alex saves Ava, particularly like at the end, but like you know, there's not really a choice there. Right. Like a lot of the times, Ava just like saves herself, and I really appreciated that. That like Like Ava's like yeah, Yeah. with the pool, and like later, even with Liam later, Mm -hmm. like. She like headbutts him at a right. later altercation, and it's like like it. I like that like like he Ava takes her very much but, can handle yeah. herself, and she yeah. does eventually start taking Krav Maga lessons with Ralph at you know, yeah. Alex's Krav Maga studio. So like I you know I I really appreciate that Anna Hong is like you know I could go the easy route and have Alex like swoop in and save her every time, but like no, I'm going to show that I, Ava is like willing and able to kick a man in the balls at yeah. any time. 
I do wish that like the first time had been like something to actually save her from, but whatever. Also, can I just say that so Liam has graduated and like why – what is it? Like, why are all these men who graduated still hanging around college campuses and we're supposed to think they're not losers? Like – what? I don't know because they're in, they're in D.C. They're in a city. I don't know. Like I'm just thinking of like, listen. I think I think they are losers. Let me let me just put that out. <laughs> but I'm just thinking of like in a city. Like I'm thinking of like, say you live on the Lower East Side of New York. You're gonna live near NYU's campus. You're probably gonna like run into a bunch of NYU students all the I time. Guess. But like you're not a loser just because you happen to live in a city yeah, that's if like you're close dating, to a school. You're like dating. Yeah, it's not just living close to it. It's like being so involved in the social life still. Okay, but know. Liam was like a year older than her. Like Ava's a senior. <laughs> you know, it's not that weird for a junior and a senior in college to date. Mm-mm. Yeah, or a yeah, senior yeah. and a guy. Well, that do we know? Anyway. That she, we're never told how much older than he, whatever. All right, so now it's time for the gala. Another thing I like about Ava is that she's well able to get her own invitations to fancy shit. Yeah, so she goes to an alumni event that Alex is there to like, I don't know, schmooze. schmooze. Play the long game. <laughs> he's literally, wait, he's literally waxing poetic about keeping people in your orbit just to play the long game and like talking to this boring guy. And then literally one second later, he's like, sees Ava and he's like, oh, good. If I had to listen to him for one more second, I would have stabbed myself in the eye with a fork. <laughs> like so much for the long game. Get out of here. Like, you can't even listen, handle one well, conversation. Even, even, the most, <laughs> even the best game master, masters can only play for so long. <laughs> he sees Ava. She's in a so long. Dress. He's in a sexy it's dress. A, it's a Cinderella moment. Like walking in. And he just is like, at her. well, here's the thing. He's definitely already been turned on from her. So it's, this isn't necessarily like his like, oh, she's beautiful moment. Because he's no, already no. Like, By Cinderella moment, I mean everyone's staring at It's not just him. Like Everyone's like, oh, who's that girl? Like, who's that hot lady? Oh, okay. Right. So she comes in and he goes absolutely feral. He goes absolutely feral. And he's yeah. like trying to make a beeline for her. But he keeps getting like interrupted. Like people keep trying mm-hmm. to come after her, which I just realized is a parallel to the ending scene. When like Ava's looking for him and she keeps getting interrupted by people. Yeah, that's true. There are a lot of bookends in this book. Yeah. I wonder if she just yeah. like plot use that like circle method, you know? Maybe. Interesting. Okay. So anyway, so he's going for Ava. And then when he finally spots her again, that loser guy he was talking to is dancing with her. And he looks at him and he's like, she laughs at like something the guy says. And Alex is like, he didn't deserve her laugh. Me, 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 me. <laughs> and then he steps uh, in. I know, and he proves that he he's so Colton like immediately realizes what's going on he's like oh sorry man and alex is like oh we'll get lunch together next week sometime at some at this really fancy club that like you would love to go to so like he proves that he knows how to use a carrot instead of a stick like he is fully <laughs> capable of like right like there's no reason to be so, bribing these like college students i mean i mean blackmailing these college students he could just be bribing them God. Okay. Also, so they, right before they, this, right before this, Madeline accosted him, and he's like, "Leave me alone. I'm not above ruining women. Like, get out of here." Anyway, they're dancing. So he, they're dancing, and Ava's like, "You don't even know me." And this psycho proceeds to list all of these like trivial facts fun about facts. Her. He's like, "Your favorite color is yellow." Me, 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 me. You say your favorite season. And like this is like I was like oh like he notices details about her like this is cute and then we get to her favorite season and he's like you say her favorite your favorite season is summer but it's actually winter and he turns it's like some weird like adrenaline thing like (laughs) makes so weird and I was like sir what are you doing but then he traces her lips with his thumb and I promptly got over that (laughs) he's like my skin's prickling from the strange electric charge in the air Twilight. He grabs her chin, tilts her face up, and then he's like, mine and vengeance's shadows twine and walk hand in hand or like some bullshit. He's like, what I hated most about Ava was also what I loved about her. Darkness craves light as much as it wants to destroy it, which is a nice metaphor. But since darkness is the absence of light, isn't it technically always light destroying darkness, not the other way around? Yeah, that's always what it is. The broody hero is like, I'm darkness. I'm going to put out her light. And then like the lesson learned in the end is like, actually, she brings light to your darkness. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, so she's like, you don't know what I want. And he's like, obviously, in his head, he's like, obviously, I want vengeance. No, it's actually pretty deep. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. He's like, I want vengeance. And she wants unconditional love, obviously. And he's making, you know, the dark and light connection. And then he's like, it was already too late. 
She was mine. She just didn't know it yet. That was good. That was good. <laughs> and I was like, good, good. <laughs> And I do appreciate that Ava, when he is like, oh, you just want to be loved. Like, you just want unconditional love. She immediately sees right through his broody nonsense. She's, like, not having it. And she's like, you want love, too, you dickhead. Like She calls him on his bullshit. Yeah. Which is a comment. Which is a recurring theme. Smart enough. Like, Ava really doesn't put up with a lot of Alex's bullshit. Oh, and this is when I thought that since Liam cheated on Ava, she was going to think that, like, Alex was cheating with Madeline. But that just was not the direction that went in. Madeline – exists to be mean for no reason and get shit on basically yeah but then she like works with the big bad at the end (laughs) to get ava kidnapped so all right and that's a wrap for part one of twisted love check us out next week with you guessed it part two (laughs) of emotionally unavailable men Uh and uh and the women that evil ex-girlfriends yeah (laughs) (laughs) and the women that thwart them all (laughs) <laughs> twist them up into knots of love <laughs> also the cat scale <laughs> if you want to check us out on instagram tiktok and facebook at we read it one night on twitter at we read it podcast and gmail we read it one night at gmail.com also check out our merch on Redbubble. we got some awesome swag that allison highlighted and debuted on the instagram if you followed us on there you'd see it and please <laughs> leave us a rating and review. We will also start the next episode with a rating and review plea. It's so easy. We literally just tap the stars. That's it. And right it will help us so much. Yeah. Do it right now, please. Um, do it right now. You don't, you don't It'll to... give you a dopamine boost, I promise. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> One free shot. Also, don't forget to get your flu shots. Speaking of boosts. Um, I That's true. have won and the your family COVID booster. Those are available oh, at CVS, that. Walgreens, yeah. and Rite Aid yeah. nationwide if you're in the United States. If you're elsewhere, I hope that you, too, have access to COVID booster shots. But mm-hmm. I don't know what your country's policies are. Mm-hmm. So look that up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're available in the U.S. Very They're easy. probably available where you are, too. Google COVID booster for me. It'll come up <laughs> for me. I just feel like that's somehow going to lead to like some like anti vaxxer propaganda sites. Like, Quite possibly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> don't type that in. But do leave us a rating and review. Make sure you get caught up on all your vaccines. Go to your go to your annual checkup. Make sure everything's feeling good. Get go to the dentist. You know, preventative care is important. This is okay. <laughs> neither of us are doctors. This is anyway. medical advice. <laughs> <laughs> on that note <laughs> on that note give us your listener suggestions like this one this one was a listener suggestion this is technically the last book in our listener suggestion summer which Twisted it's love no has no summer. place in your health care anyway <laughs> no um don't alex volkoff not a doctor do not take any advice he may give in this book <laughs> <laughs> but go get your flu shot godspeed comrades godspeed, godspeed.